Hey everybody, I'm Chris Primesberger, editor of eWeek. Thanks for joining us today for eWeek eSpeaks. Our guest today is Zias Caravalla, who's one of the best, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many other people, one of the best networking analysts in the country, in the business today. Zias, welcome again. Thanks, Chris. It's always uh, always happy to be here any week. These are fun, and I see you're you're happy. You're in your happy place up in the clouds. I like I'm that. in the clouds. So we're going to talk about clouds. So I thought I might as well put myself in the clouds. Okay, we had a big news item today. Today is um, April twenty first, uh, twenty twenty, and we had a big news item today involving Google and Cisco, two of the huge behemoths in the IT business. What was that news about? Yeah, you know, it was big news, and I and I think the. Um, Cisco and Google actually have done quite a bit of work together over the years. They've, uh, you know, they really helped drive Kubernetes to where it is, Istio. They've done some stuff on the collab side. And I think it's always good to see two 800-pound gorillas get together and make things easier for customers because it's not unusual to go into a company and find Google and Cisco. You want those things to work together, and uh, those two companies are, are making it happen. Now, what was announced was something called Cisco SD-WAN Cloud Hub with Google Cloud. I think it's a little bit of a mouthful, uh, but what it is ostensibly is they positioned it as a network fabric for hybrid and multi-clouds. And you might be thinking, well, what the heck's a network fabric for hybrid and multi-clouds? Well, if you think of the whole concept of hybrid multi-cloud is that you've got a bunch of, there's no one cloud, right? Just like there's no one internet. You've got a collection of clouds that you tie together to make things work. And um, what's happening is now that applications are becoming more containerized, more componentized, when we build an app, we take a piece from this cloud, we take a piece from this cloud, could be on-prem, could be in a private cloud, but we need to tie those things together. So what ties those, those things together? Well, the network does. And so if I'm doing that, now the network plays an important role in connectivity, but it also plays an important role in policy and performance and security and things because I want to make sure whatever policy I apply here, I can apply here and I can apply here and apply here. So the Cisco SD-WAN Cloud Hub with Google Cloud creates that network fabric that actually ties all those resources together and lets the network look like one. So in some sense, you can think it actually, it bridges that private public cloud barrier. So if I create a, say a network segment, and I do some segmentation and I want to be able to keep certain resources in one segment, I don't have to recode that in the public cloud. And, and that's what customers have had to do historically is if they do something policy wise or security or performance, they, they do their programming on prem, they do it in this cloud and that cloud, and it leads to a lot of human error and a lot of inconsistency. So for customers that, that want to deploy this, they're going to get a number of benefits. The first one is they'll get, uh, an on-demand network. And so the network itself will adjust to how things are performing. You can set certain policies and QoS parameters. And then if there's a certain application that should be prioritized over the other, uh, it'll do that automatically. And that's an extension of what Cisco is doing on the intent-based networking side. And if you're not sure what intent-based networking is, read the blog I wrote about that on eWeek. Um, and I think if you Google it, you'll find it. Um, I think one of the more cool aspects is the automated application and path aware routing. And so it, what Cisco and Google have done is taken a lot of the complexity out of mapping business service to the appropriate network. And so with an SD-WAN, there's no, you're actually bringing together several different types of network. They're all active at the same time. And now if I'm based on network telemetry, I can have certain applications take the most appropriate path. And it'd be, be a little like if I was going from San Jose down to San Francisco, there's a whole bunch of different routes I could take if my if certain cars could automatically adjust and you know take 280 when it needs to or 101 or or you know go over the other side, that might make some sense, right? So we can't do that in the streets yet. I guess we kind of can with ways, but yeah, in fact, that's a good way to think about what they've done with the application or route and it's ways for application traffic. So it takes advantage of all the network paths. And lastly, I think you get better security. And so the what well, the one thing this work from home craze has created as as we've tried to navigate our way through the COVID pandemic is everybody work from home, but that's really opened up the the, the spectrum of security, right? The security is getting harder and harder to do, and um, what and uh, again if we're if I'm trying to set policies in one place and set them in another place, that's never going to work. And with security, there's an axiom, right? You're only as secure as your as your weakest link. And that could be anywhere in that cloud ecosystem. So now through Cisco's vManage, that's their single pane of glass for SD-WAN, I can set that security policy once and it'll propagate 
across the multi-cloud. And so I think the Google and Cisco working together to do this has actually greatly reduced the complexity for customers because doing right. this ma manually is extremely difficult. Yeah, absolutely. It's impossible, probably. Um, well, it is Google, impossible, yeah. Go Google and Cisco are two of the largest <laughs> and most and busiest and most used companies in uh, the Silicon Valley, a lot of customers. How does a customer actually take advantage of this fabric? Do, do they have to dial in to Cisco for a special link or a special application of some kind, or how does that work? No, it runs off Cisco's Viptela SD-WAN, which is the market lead in SD-WAN. Okay. So as long, if you run in vManage, you run in Cisco SD-WAN, which is the old the Viptela product they bought, you can actually connect into Google Cloud that, this, that way. So now you got to be running Google Cloud Platform, right. right, and some of those services, but a lot of those customers are. And mm -hmm. so if you are running Google Cloud and you're running Cisco SD-WAN, which a lot of customers are, you'll be able to take advantage of this. Mm -hmm. All the dots that are connected and automated are just astounding to me yeah i um, actually think it's an it's notable from a google perspective too because okay you know they're the smallest of the three cloud vendors you know the big three with aws and, uh, and azure and i think google was very um anti-hybrid at one time they they really believed every company would run their it like google and then mm -hmm. when thomas curian came in he actually changed that quite a bit he sort of listened to customers more and so this is a big pivot for google as well that i think they're they're, they're finally realizing that the world isn't going to be all public cloud. It's going to be all, it's going to be hybrid. And I think for Cisco too, it's an admission that uh, it's not going to be all private cloud, right? So they have to, both companies have to play nicely in each other's ecosystems. And so by partnering together, they actually uh, make that solution simpler. And I think over time, the most successful IT companies will be the ones that actually find a way to partner because all the stuff's interconnected, right? There's no, there's, I can't run just Cisco in right. isolation or just Google everything works together. That's absolutely right. So the change in management at Google played a big part in their whole approach. Is that correct? Yeah, well, they've been a lot, you know, even the release of Anthos last year at, uh, at, at Google Next, right? I think that was a big moment for Google uh, that, hey, we do need a private cloud stack because customers want that, mm -hmm. right? And uh, there's certain workloads, right? And, and the, you can do some unique things with this partnership. You could keep your data on-prem, use Google AI in the cloud, or I could build my application um, with some elements of public cloud and some, some, some elements on my private. And so the whole concept of the hybrid cloud has changed. It used to be that um, uh, I run the same workload in my public cloud and my private cloud and I load balance across the two. But hybrid cloud today means whatever you want it to mean. It, could, it can mean I'm running certain workloads here and certain workloads there and I need the two to talk together. But this lets customers deploy their application however they want with components wherever they want. Excellent. And for those of you watching uh, this video right now, go to eWeek.com and read Zeus's entire story. Uh, well done, by the way, Zeus, uh, ex explaining um, a lot of what we talked about here and going into greater detail. Zeus, thank you very much again for coming uh, on uh, eWeek eSpeaks. Uh, thanks, Chris. Always a pleasure. Okay, we'll see you next time. Yeah. And for everybody else out there, have a great rest of your eWeek. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.